All right, Shalom, Shalom, Yasha Allah. Um, it's, it's Brother Kazak. You know, just wanted to come and um, do a relatively quick lesson, you know, through the spirit and power of, your, of the Most High and the Son, Yahweh Shah. Um, first and foremost, let me give all glory, all honor and glory to the Most High, Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls God, in the name of his Son, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, you know. So, um, yeah, so like I said, it's going to be a little relatively quick topic. Um, not really too much to get into, but this a uh, couple people been asking me questions on this. So I'm going to um, go ahead and do a lesson on it, you know, through the spirit and power of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. So um, the, the, uh, the topic is our birthdays, our birthday is lawful. You know, our celebrating our birthday, is it lawful? Is it a wicked thing? Is it a good thing? You know, does the Most High approve of it? Is he cool with it? You know, so we go through the uh, spirit and power of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. You know, we go go through the precepts. We go go through the origins of the birthday. And you know we go we go see through the discernment. Um, first, let's just let's just go through the origins. Let's just tap into that real quick. Let's Google it. We just go Google the origin of birthdays. Right. It says. So I can see it. I don't know if y'all can see it. Hold on. Lock in my tablet, kind of. It says the origin of birthdays. It says, this is what Google say. It says the the idea of celebrating the date of your birth is a pagan tradition. So you know, pagan, you know, that's that's like a, a false religion. You know, that's that's uh especially it's traditions of men, it's a tradition, you know, something that the most high never gave us to do. You know, like uh, a lot of these uh Christian holidays, they are pagan. You know, you worshiping other gods. Those that's what uh paganism is, the worship of other gods, you know. It says, the idea of celebrating the date of your birth is a pagan tradition. The ancient Greeks believed that each person had a spirit that attended his that attended his or her birth and kept watch. So so they believe it say the ancient Greeks believed that that it was a spirit. Every person got a spirit that come that that's watching on their birthday. That's watching them on their birthday. And 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 it's keeping watch over them, you know. When did the Most High say that? You know, it says, and kept watch. That that spirit had a mystic relation with the God on whose birthday the individual was born. Says the book. Says the says the book, the Lore of Birthdays. So you know, that's just folly right there, man. You know, because the Most High. So basically, if you celebrate your birthday, you worshiping other gods. That's basically what it's saying. So we're going to go to the law real quick. Let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 20. Exodus, chapter 20. And I'm going to start at verse 3. It says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth thou shalt not bow down to thyself to them nor serve them for i the lord thy god am a jealous god visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me so the most high said we should not have no other gods before him you know and basically we just read in uh we just read on google about the origin of birthdays that basically you celebrating and you worshiping every time you celebrate your birthday you uh you think you're doing it for yourself you celebrating the day you was born like whoa I, I was born this day you know my mama had me and all of that and you know you know like people like to say they post on facebook you know uh at this day let's say what's today uh september 12th they be like september 12th 7 p.m a star was born now where do i say that in the scriptures man you know it don't say that when did the lord tell us to do those things to say that you was a star that was born, you know. When when did the Lord say to celebrate your birthday? You know, let's go let's go to the uh let's see who celebrated their birthday back then. Let's get an example in the scriptures. We'll go to the book of Genesis, chapter 40, and verse 20. It says, And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday. So Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, you know, he 
he was celebrating his birthday. He celebrated his birthday. I think that's where the Greeks got it from. If you do further research into the um into the origin of birthdays, the Greeks adopted this pagan tradition from the ancient from uh from ancient Egypt, you know. It says, and it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. So, you know, Pharaoh, he was feeling good. He wanted to um celebrate his birthday. You know? So So that was uh that was an Egypt tradition. You know, it was a it was a tradition in ancient Egypt to celebrate your birthday. But let's see what the Lord said about the uh about the traditions of Egypt. You know, saying if we should follow them or or if we should not follow them. You know, so we're gonna go to the book of Leviticus. Chapter 18 and verse 2. It says, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. It says, verse 3, After the doings of the land of Egypt. So remember, Pharaoh was the king of Egypt. So you know, that was his land. So you know, what if, if the Pharaoh doing it, all the, other, all the other Egyptians was doing it. They was doing it all throughout the land, celebrating their birthdays. You know, got their little uh, got their beliefs that that the uh, that the little pagan gods or whatever is uh, is watching over them since the day of their birth. You know, and they celebrating that. You know, it says after the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do, and after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall you walk in the order that says slack it. So he said. We shouldn't be doing we shouldn't be doing the things that we uh that we uh learn from from the people around us like uh coming out of Egypt we can't be doing the things that we learn from being around them people and going into the land of Canaan we can't be doing the things that we that we uh that we see that we see them doing you know we got to be a holy people we got to be a set apart people we got to be above all the rest of these people just because the so-called white man and the uh and the uh, African man and the Arab man and all of them want to celebrate their birthday. That don't mean we got to do it, you know? Celebrating your birthday, that's a wicked thing. That's putting yourself before the most high. You know, you esteeming, you esteeming the day. You esteeming the day above, uh, you esteeming the day that, uh, you was born above the most high. If I could find this precept real quick. I believe it's in Syrac. Leave it's in Syrac. Con, this is the book of Syrac, chapter 33, verse 7. It says, Why doth one day excel another, when as all the light of every day in the year is of the sun? So it say, Why do one day excel another? Why why do they why do your birthday matter when it's it's the uh you get the same amount of daylight, you know? You get the uh the same amount of time, same amount of hours, same amount of seconds as any other day. Why do this day matter? Just because it was the day you was born, you know. This day is just another day. It, you could die on your damn birthday too, you know. Just just like just the way the Lord brought you in this world, the Lord could take you out. And, and a lot of a lot of people say that, but that's for real, you know. It says I'm gonna read it again. It says this Syrac 33 and 7. It says Why does one day excel another, when as all the light of every day in the year is of is of the sun by the knowledge of the lord they were distinguished and he altered seasons and feasts so the only the only uh days that we supposed to be celebrating is the ones that the day is the days that the lord acknowledged the days that the lord told us to celebrate you know feast of tabernacles feast of first fruits you know passover you know um feast of unleavened bread you know day of atonement you know uh you know all these various feast days that the lord gave us he never told us to celebrate our birthday you know, let's get a, let's get a, uh, we're gonna go to the book of, um, to the book of Job, no, it's like you, we're gonna go to Jeremiah real quick, to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, and what is that, verse 14, it's like you. It says, this Jeremiah 20 and 14, it says, Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bare me be blessed. 
So why is Jeremiah saying, curse be the day where I was born? You know, let not the day that my mother bear me be blessed. Because what? It's just a, it was just another day that I was born, you know. Okay, it was the day that I was born, but what? We not in the kingdom, you know. We not in our rightful estate. You know, I was born, I was born uh, in this damn fleshly body, man. I got to endure all this temptation, you know. Uh, I got to. I gotta fight all these damn demons every day, you know. I gotta, I gotta deal with brothers having an evil eye toward me because we under these damn curses, you know. I gotta deal with my wife. I gotta deal with my wife, um, bickering and and and, and not being, not wanting to be in order and all of that, you know. I gotta deal with uh, paying these damn bills. So why, why, why is it a good thing that uh, why is it a good thing that I was even born in the first place, you know? Why is it a good thing? We not in the kingdom, but you know, in the kingdom. When we in the kingdom and we not under these curses no more, and the Lord puts the curses on our enemies, then then it's gonna be it's gonna be happy times. It's gonna be a uh, a precious thing to be born. You know, it's gonna be a precious thing to to celebrate uh to celebrate life, not celebrate your birthday because that's still gonna be wicked. You know, but to celebrate life. You know, to celebrate to celebrate us uh living in our righteous estate. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a great time of celebration because what we gonna be back on that pedestal where the Most High. Where the Most High took us off of because we was um, because we disobeyed His word, you know. So I'm gonna read that again. It's Jeremiah 20 and 14. It says, "Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed." So don't don't be trying to bless the day where your mom when your mom uh, gave birth to you, you know. Don't be trying to bless the day, you know. Let's get a precept on that. Go to the book of Job, chapter 3. Job, chapter 3 and 3, it says, Let the day perish wherein I was born, and the night in which I was said, There is a man-child conceived. So he said, let the day perish where he, wherein he was born. Because why? Because we, we alive and we got to, okay, we alive. We got this little life, but we got to go through all of these troubles, all of these perils, you know. That's why I said when you, um, when you come into this truth, when you come into this truth, you eat the whole roll and it make your belly it make your belly bitter, like it's in the book of uh, Ezekiel. You know, you eat the whole roll, it's in your mouth sweet as honey, but it make your belly bitter. Cause what? You woken up, your your uh your mindset is keen to all of the things that we got to go through now. Yeah, we got the we got the promises. You know, we got the um, we the only true people that um that's worshiping the only one and true living God. You know, we was the cho we God chosen people and all of that. You know, it's it's sweet in it's sweet in your mouth is honey. You know, we got the kingdom coming and all of that. But what we got to go through all of these curses. We got to go through this fleshly battle on the daily. You know, we gotta um, we gotta strive to walk by the spirit instead of walking by the flesh, because you know, it, because it's it's just how the Lord ordained things to be. You know, we got that evil seed, like it, uh like it said in uh Second Edges. He said we got that evil seed that was um that was in us inside Adam. You know. We got that same evil seed, and it's and it's just been passed on through generation, through generation, through generation, and it's gonna be like that all the way until we end the kingdom when the Lord changes our bodies, you know, into that uh, Salakia. Let me go through it. I think it's in Corinthians. It might be First Corinthians fourteen, I believe. Con, this is the uh, book of First Corinthians, chapter fifteen, and I'm gonna start at fifty. It says, "It says now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Neither doth corruption inherit the kingdom. I mean, neither doth Salakia. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery." We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So, what does it mean we gonna all be changed? We not gonna have these. We not gonna have these same um, these same bodies no more. You know, I mean, you know, we we not gonna be subject to sin anymore. You know, the, our flesh is not gonna be our. It's not gonna be within our flesh to uh to want to go off. You know, it's not gonna be in our flesh to want to sleep with prostitutes. It's not gonna be in our flesh to want, uh to need a cigarette. You know, it's not gonna be in our flesh to uh to lust after that pork. You know, it's not gonna be in our flesh to um to wanna uh roll up that blunt and, and just smoke weed all day, man. It's not gonna be in our flesh to do that no more. You know, what's gonna be in our flesh? Walking after righteousness, serving Yahweh by Shimia Shah, 
keeping the Sabbath day, you know, keeping the dietary law, you know, keeping the moral and the civil laws, you know, uh, giving up a burnt offering to the Most High, you know, for the feast days, you know. That's what's going to be in our flesh, you know. It says, in a moment, in the twink in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so you know it's not it's not meat it's not meat to be um it's not wise to want to celebrate your birthday because what did you celebrate you celebrating yourself coming into the world to uh and you coming into a, a, a damn life of war, man. A damn life of war. A life of being in captivity. We in captivity, what are you celebrating for? You celebrating, okay, okay, you was born this day, but what? We in captivity. We still under bondage. We still serving this sentence that the most high that the most high put on us, you know? Ain't no point in celebrating nothing. And then on top of that, it's all idolatry, man. It's all idolatry. Let me go to this in the book of Psalms real quick. Cause if you celebrating your birthday, you really just serving God to the other nations, you know. It says, this Psalms ninety six and four. It says, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. So the Most High Yahweh is to be feared above all gods. Not these damn uh, spirits that these damn paganistic uh, paganistic traditions say that. Uh, that uh been following you for uh ever since you was born making sure you was good no that's the lord following you man's goings are of the lord you know man's goings are not of pagan devils you know let me go to this real quick this the uh so like yeah let me finish this though it says verse five it says for all the gods of the nations are idols but the lord made the heavens so all the gods of the other nations they idols man you know them pagan, them pagan gods, they don't exist. Them is idols, you know. If anything, they some damn, they they just some damn demons in disguise, and and yo ass and yo ass just uh trying to worship them. But really, you need to be worshiping the Most High, you know, because what them demons do? Them demons they worship the Most High. They carry out His orders. They do whatever He tell them to do, you know. Let's go to the book of. What is that? Is that First Corinthians? This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 19. It says, What say I then that the idol is anything? So like you. Con, it says, What say I then that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the sacrifice, I mean, so like you. It says, But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice. They sacrifice to devils and not to the most high. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. So that little birthday dinner that uh that your friend having, you know, that little Christmas feast, that little um that little uh fourth of July barbecue, that's not to the most high. Even though y'all might pray over it, y'all praying over Thanksgiving dinner and all of that, that's not to the most high. The most high ain't accepting that feast, you know? That 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 uh that uh that damn them damn dinners is for the uh, is dedicated to damn devils, man. You know that's what the, that's what them that's what them dinners is being dedicated to. You know they being dedicated to devils, and 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 you don't want to be doing that, man. You don't want to be every that birthday cake that you get when they when they bake that cake and put your little name on it or a picture on it or whatever, and you blow out them candles, which is idolatry most of all. You know we gonna get into that too, but when they uh when they bake that cake and then everybody eat it. And y'all singing that little song or whatever. The most high ain't dealing with that. You know? That's all that's all uh idolatry. That's worshiping other gods. You know, let's go to that. Because for one, you blowing you light you got this fire on the candle. And you lighting the candle up. And what they say when you uh blow the candle out, you make a wish. You you asking this candle, you asking this candle to um to uh grant your wish, man. You know? You asking this candle to grant your wish. So like it, what is that? Let it go. 
that's what I want. This Leviticus 26 and 1. It says, Ye shall make you no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image. What is those candles? Don't you stand the candles up on top of the cake? That's rearing up a standing image, you know? And what? You sitting in front of them candles, and you blowing them out. Blowing them out. You know, making a wish over them. Oh, I wish that I could be six feet tall. Wishing over damn vanity, man. Oh, I wish that, I wish that uh, Rebecca called me next week. So I could, uh, so we could do some things, wishing over damn things that that uh that the damn candles can't even do for you, you know. Let me go to this real quick in Wisdom of Solomon. Let me that chapter thirteen. I'm going to read this Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse, I'm going to read verse 11. It says, I'm going to start at verse 8. It says, but that which is made with hands is cursed as well it and he that made it. He, he so like it, he because he made it and it because being, and it being corruptible, I mean, and it because being corruptible it was called God. So you know that what was what is them candles? Them candles is the work of man's hands. You know, them candles can't do nothing for you. Them candles ain't shit but uh cold wax. Them candles ain't nothing but cold wax on top of a cake with fire on top of them and, and you and you blowing them out, expecting the uh expecting your wish to be granted. You know? It says it says uh and you and you basically calling it a god because you asking it to fulfill something, you asking it to do something. So I mean, you holding it, you holding it to some uh, to some goddamn um, to some goddamn uh, high authority. You holding it, you holding this candle to be to have some type of power when really you ain't got no damn power. You had to put it up there to stand it up there on the damn cake, you know. It wouldn't be able to stand up if if you if you ain't stick it down in the cake. It can't even stand up by itself. But it's supposed to grant your wish. Come on now. Use common sense, Israel. It says, it says, verse 9, For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto God. So these things are hateful to the Most High. You know, that's the question and answer right there. You know, is birthday celebrations, is it cool with the Most High? No, it's hateful to the Most High. Because why? Because you're following paganistic rituals. Just like when you celebrate Halloween. Just like when you celebrate Christmas. Just like when you celebrate damn uh, 4th of July and Thanksgiving and damn New Year's, you know? You celebrating pagan idols. You celebrating false gods. And the Most High said in Exodus 20 and 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, you know? It says, It says, verse 10, it says, For that which, for that which is made shall be punished together with him that made it. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles, Shall there be shall there be a visitation, because in the creature of the Most High, they are, they are become an abomination. So these things are an abomination to the Most High. It says and stumbling blocks to the souls of men. It's a stumbling block because you really believe that if you if you light this candle and you blow it out and you make your wish and you don't tell nobody about it, then then uh, your wish go really come true. When did the Lord say that, man? You know. When did the Lord say that that you blow that you blow this candle out and your wish go come true? The Lord ain't dealing with that. The Lord ain't the Lord ain't using no damn candles, man. The only candles that the Lord is using is the menorah, and you don't blow them out to make no damn wish, you know. It says, it says, stumbling blocks to the souls of men and a snare to the feet of the unwise. Because what you unwise if you doing these things? Cause why? Cause you serving devils. You serving pagan gods. You know, this will be my last example of this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut this short because I ain't mean for this to be a long lesson anyway. We'll go back to the book of Job. Because Job kids were celebrating their birthdays, you know, and this is probably why the Lord, Lord let Satan take their ass.
This the uh, Book of Job, chapter one, and verse four. It says, and his and his sons talk about Job kids. It says, and his and his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day. So what that mean, every one his day, every one on their birthday, they had a feast in their house. You know, they they invited their siblings over, probably their homies from down the block or whatever. You know, the the people, the other people from the villages and all of that. You know, and they and they made a feast in their house. Everyone his day, everyone his birthday, and what? And sent and called their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. You know, them eat that eat them uh them, them feasts and them drinks, all of that you sacrificing it to devils, like we just read in uh First Corinthians. You know, you sacrificing those things to devils. That bottle of henny that you just grabbed to celebrate your birthday, sacrificing unto devils. You know, that bottle of dulce that you got on your way to the club. For your birthday night, you sacrificing the devils, you know? All of those things. It says, And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed the Most High in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. So Job was an upright and righteous man, you know? Job... And Job knew that his kids was going off by celebrating their birthday. But Job, he couldn't stop them from doing what they wanted to do, you know. But what? He went he went and made offerings for them. He went and made offerings for them. He went and slayed bullocks, slayed bullocks and, 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 and did burnt offerings upon the altar to uh, sacrifice to the Most High because uh, for sin offerings for his children, you know. Because he, he thought that they was going off. He knew that they was going off celebrating their birthdays. So, you know, don't, don't be like that. Don't be like that, Israel. You know, we can't be celebrating our birthdays. We can't be uh, following these paganistic ways. Don't even tell nobody happy birthday. You know, don't even don't even acknowledge your own birthday. You know, because all of that is just paganistic rituals. What is one day well? What is one day above another? Like it, like we just read in the book of Sirach 33. You know. So with that being said, I want to be Israel a hearty a hearty shalom. You know, keep the commandments and keep the faith. And, you know, remember to uh, strive to come out this world, man, and separate from your oppressor and separate from his ways. You know, it say learn not the way of, a he of the heathen. Hold on, let me grab that real quick. The spirit don't want me to stop yet. I got one more precept. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, and verse 2. It says, Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. So it say, learn not the way of the heathen. What is the ways that we learn from the heathen? Celebrating our birthday. Celebrating these damn uh, holiday, holidays or folly days, as we call them, you know. Instead of the high holy days that the Lord gave us in his Bible. We want to celebrate Christmas. You know, we want to celebrate, uh, goddamn, um, whatever, whatever damn holiday, man. Thanksgiving and all of them days. Halloween and all that, you know. And it says, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven. Stop worshiping these damn horoscopes. Saying you a damn uh, Capricorn. Saying you a damn Aquarius. Saying you a, say I'm a Taurus. What's your sign? Sisters be like, sisters be like, what's your sign? Are you are you a Scorpio? Oh, I can't deal with you. I need me. I need me a um. I need me a Libra. It say I need me a Libra for this month for 2020. I need me a Libra. What? When, when did the Lord say that? When did the Lord say anybody was a Libra or a Scorpio or an Aquarius? Or a Capricorn, you know. When when did the Lord the Lord not dealing with none of that, man? That's being dismayed at the signs of heaven. These are stumbling blocks to our people, and we gotta come out of that because it's all idolatry, it's all witchcraft. So with that, I'm just being Israel the Holy Shalom, you know, Shalom.